Education, it's killing creativity. This is a very serious and profound subject that we are talking about. We probably heard this sentence before. It w this sentence was repeated by many authors, intellectuals, and teachers. I agree with this statement, and we're going to talk about it. But before we do this, before we dive into this point, let me introduce you some. This is Duarte. Duarte is seven, and he was diagnosed with autism. And this is Ana Margarida, his mom. We met a few weeks ago in Portugal during a social project that I'm involved with. Ana Margarida looks pretty happy in this picture, but actually, she's suffering. And you know why? Because Duarte's teacher just told her that he couldn't stay in school anymore. And you want to know why? Because she said, Duarte is too creative to school. Can you believe that? I mean, we are in 2017, and a teacher just said that. I was shocked when I heard this the first time. And I tried to understand, how can a teacher can say this? And I think I discovered. So let's do a quick trip back in time, and I will try to explain to you. The first contact humanity had with education was in ancient Greece. During that time, education was seen as something to connect just two things, body and spirit. They had no rules, no dress code, no evaluation. But then people thought, that's not enough. We need to make education more seriously. And then in the 18th century, we had the Industrial Revolution, and we did the traditional educational schooling system was invented. And of course, it was pretty similar to a factory or an assembly line. So kids start to have time to arrive and leave school. They had to wear uniforms, and a noise of a bell would notify them the start and the end of their days. But then people thought, that's not enough. We need to take education more seriously. So they decided to create a system of evaluation. And then they start to put exams, they give it rewards and punishment. But then people said, that's not enough. We need to take education even more seriously. And then they said, OK, so let's create something after school, after university. Let's create something called MBA. And let's, <laughs> let's do it expensive. Let's do it even harder, even more restrict. Let's do it even more seriously. And that's how our educational system is today. So what's next? Should we keep saying it's not enough? Should we keep saying that we need to take education more seriously? I don't think so. I think we should say, that's enough. Now, we, we, need, we need to take education less seriously. And when I say less seriously, please don't get me wrong. I'm not saying that MBA is not important. Of course it is. I'm not saying that exams are not important. Of course they are. What I'm talking about is we need to change the way we are related to education. The, the way, change the way we see education. Why so serious? <laughs> and, and I'm thinking about this moment. I mean, why I'm so serious? We are in this amazing theater. Look around. Look at the people right, right next to you. Look at And give it a big smile, maybe a hug. And if you are in your home or live, watching on stream, take a deep breath and give yourself a big smile. You see, it doesn't hurt, but change everything. Change the energy. And that's what I'm talking about. The same way this guy, Dr. Patch Adams, the real one, not Robin Williams. This guy, a few, a few years ago, looked at medicine and ask, why so serious? 
And then the next day, he just took off his uniform, put a red nose, dressed as a clown, and started changing the way he was doing medicine. Of course, he remains doctor. He kept giving medicine to his patient. He just did one thing. He just changed the way to do it. He just made it more fun, more joyful. And with this, he changed the relationship patients have with healthcare, with hospital. And he got incredible results. That's what I'm talking about. That's what I'm talking about. For me, learning is an invisible process. And it needs emotion. It needs inspiration. It needs to touch our hearts. Think with me. How many times in our lives have we cried or laughed for some reason? And we learn from that experience. And we've learned from that. Why? Because we're talking about feelings. We remember that. UNESCO four pillars of learning are learn to know, learn to do, learn to live together, and learn to be. Why so serious? I mean, I believe that jokes, hugs, games, informality helps classes to be better. I believe that education could be fun. Actually, it should be fun. And I'm a teacher, by the way. And that's me. <laughs> and I used to wear this to teach for adults innovation, creativity, holacracy. And there's a very important point here. The fact that I'm wearing a dress does not lower the educational content of my class. It actually has the opposite effect. I believe teachers need to help students to grasp content. And I believe that with fun, we can do this. Why so serious? Eight years ago, I joined these two guys, Thiago and Felipe trying to change education in Brazil. We want to turn education into entertaining. We want to make it fun, we want to make it interesting, we want to make it nice and cool. And we did it. So we developed our own methodology, and we call it experience learning. And that's me again, and that's another class at Perestroika. Over the last 10 years, we've been putting this methodology in practice. We've been testing, improving, changing it. And now, this methodology is based on 23 principles divided in four pillars. Content, emotion, form, and structure. And about two years ago, we decided to write a book about it. And we did it. Actually, Felipe did it. And you know what we did? We just give it for free. We just subscribe in the most permissive Creative Commons license. And when people ask, why, guys? Why you did that? And we say, why not? I mean, our purpose is to help changing education, make it even better, make it even fun, entertaining. It's not make profit of it. And Here's the best part. We believe that's important, but neuroscience proves it. Dr. Judy Willis, a neurologist, wrote several books about it. She just proved that learn exp uh, fun experience help increase dopamine, endorphin, and oxygen. All these things to promote learning. So, why so serious? Why we keep doing things in education? So serious. I believe that we need more teachers dressed as princes. I believe that we need more chaos pilot, a uh, university where you learn about leadership playing with a yo-yo. 
I believe that we need more green schools, a school in Indonesia without walls, where in this campus, children learn to be humans and to joy and live life. I believe we need more locomotive labs with high quality and fun. They are changing the learning process for kids with special needs. The same case of Duarte. So, as I said at the beginning, if education is killing creativity, I believe that we are killing education when we take it too seriously. I believe it. Neuroscience, neurology also believe it. If you also believe, join us. <laughs> and just one more thing. That's me again. If you... I invite you, if you see some traditional educational system happening, just put on your invisible mask and ask, why so serious? <laughs> Thank you very much.